Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Mr. Optimistic. Today we're going to talk about how to get started in Olympic weightlifting. It's a pretty niche sport to even start out in. You know, um, I'll talk about how I got started and that was back in my beginning of my sophomore year in high school. So it was uh, by my volleyball coach actually and she was doing sports performance training and she was a testament of all the hard work that she did and she was talking about how it increased the vertical how she got all american for her college and was just talking about overall how she developed as an athlete uh, while training there so uh, the guy offered us a couple of weeks of free training to see if you know any of us liked it um, i was the only one in my team who uh, you know, thankfully could afford it, and I started doing that about uh, three times a week. Uh, three times a week in addition to all my other training. So, you know, just by chance, that's how I got exposed to it. Uh, a lot of people like you that are probably watching just typed in how to start Olympic weightlifting, and here we are. Hi, you know, and some people aren't, uh, you know, privileged to get exposed at a young age, um, but, you know, I was, and I took advantage of all that training I could do. So, you know, either you're getting, uh, you just touching a barbell for the first time, or if you had an extensive background in athletics in general, uh, just start. Just start is my biggest thing to promote. <laughs> just grab a barbell, um, just don't put a lot of weight on just watch a lot of videos there's a lot of good books out there there's just a lot of information and you know the only thing you can do is just start and that's pretty much the biggest thing because if you just mull about it it's never going to happen you'll never start and you'll never even uh you know enjoy the sport that you could potentially love at some point and there's a lot of different benefits including increasing your vertical timing uh, body awareness there's just almost a uh, infinite amount of different possibilities that you could uh you know attain by getting very very proficient in all the main lifts but you know that's kind of my first first little uh tidbit right there but number two is find a local coach in your area as simple as going to i'm gonna provide actual links uh below so i'll you know label them one through five and you can actually search for local just straight olympic weightlifting gyms in your area it's uh on the usaw website and you know you would put uh like what state you live in your zip code and then they'll just kind of list everything by closest proximity um, another one is by joining as you see in the background a crossfit gym a lot of crossfit gyms now uh in well they have to <laughs> incorporate coaching of some sort in olympic weightlifting uh if that i would definitely you know do a drop-in class maybe get some more information on that in if their coaches are actually specifically teaching the main movements um, if they have maybe a specific day that they would do it uh, you know like CrossFit Downey's the gym I mainly lift that they do have uh, specific coaches dedicated to do Olympic weightlifting only um, and you know in conjunction with all the other classes as well but we basically lift as a team Thursdays and Saturdays and that's very very important because you get to see all all you know all the lifters that are very proficient or at least getting to um, that state of proficiency because it's it's fun doing it by yourself but it's even better with you know a team environment and people that you could uh, riff off different ideas or people to watch you and kind of like hey man that was that was a bad catch it was pretty soft and just to kind of reaffirm if you're doing well and you get some sort of bar to kind of measure yourself at and most importantly the the ability of having a coach uh, will dramatically obviously decrease your odds of getting injured because you constantly have someone watching you or you know at least periodically watching you they don't always have to you know uh, stand over you while you're lifting every single rep but someone to you know kind of ask like hey was that was that good or was that you know pretty bad just to kind of keep your ego in check a little bit because you know if you even lift it at all you have those days where you're like damn i'm good like i'm killing it these are snapping these are like this is lightweight you know i should just max out right now but in reality you could you know it looks it may feel good but the look of it could be completely different so there might be a disconnect there and having a coach 
really kind of critiques that and just kind of you know again affirms your ability on self-coaching because every coach wants an athlete to one be coachable but two uh, be more self-sufficient so you know they don't really have to you know stand over you while you're you know taking heavier uh, percentages and lifts so you want to eventually that should be you know a short-term goal is to uh, you know be able to lift by yourself and and or maybe like videotape uh, yourself how I am because I'll show them like a pretty you know some of my top sets but like hey I think this was happening I think I was throwing my shoulders back the bars getting away from me uh, and then he's like yeah you got to make sure you know you tighten up your back keep the bar close you know keep your lats activated so it keeps the bar uh, nice in line with your midline so you can catch it right over your head a lot of words there but you know to summarize it all up is to just lift more efficiently and you want to eventually get to that point so number three number three is you need to find a consistent time to train so you hopefully know your schedule right now if you're a student if you're a full-time student and a part-time worker or vice versa you know what days and hours you have to allocate in your day to have you know time to train and that's very important because you know some of us have the luxury of a set schedule uh, which is which is so much easier and you don't have to really listen <laughs> to this part of it but time management is so 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 important because if you uh, time your training uh, you know training times incorrectly uh, in, t in terms of like oh maybe your coach is not there at uh, 1 to 5 and then you come in at 4 30 because you were running late or you you got lazy or something like that then you can possibly miss out on that block of coaching that you could have gotten so you know there's some things that are in our control and there's other things that are not so when it comes down to it pick times where hopefully your coach is available or will at least be in the room so you can kind of pick his brain uh, when there's certain things that need to be asked right like hey i'm missing a bunch of snatches at 75 percent like i should be making these in my sleep like can, do you see something that i'm missing you know um, but going to someone that's in uh, you know beginner stage i would definitely try to take advantage of any coaching time that is available for you so you can get better quicker because it is very frustrating if you're just starting and you just can't make heads or tails of what's going on when you're missing lifts so that's something that i definitely definitely highly highly recommend so for number four and number five they're going to be slightly mixed together because number four and five basically are one and the same <laughs> so you want to eventually measure your progress whether that progress is having a day to max out, uh, your progress should be uh, in the form of a program. So maybe it's a six week program or a four week program. Typically, once the programs are done, your coach will have some sort of max out. And once you have that max out, typically uh, my favorite is maxing out during a competition. And there's a big stigma between, oh, you don't need to compete to measure progress or I just don't like competing. I'm, you know, um, apprehensive about it. It's, you know, you get a lot of stage fright, things like that. But when it comes down to it, to it, you need to measure your progress. How will you get better? So you'll measure your progress by a max out or you need to compete. So when you need to compete, typically most gyms, not all, they will have you uh, mandatory wear a singlet. So if you don't know what a singlet is, Google singlet uh, in Google, and it will pretty much be a one piece. Think about it as a one piece uh, bathing suit, essentially. And, you know, people don't like doing that. That's, you know, um, their comfort level. But some uh, gyms don't make it mandatory and you can put shorts on. So if you're not comfortable lifting in front of others, uh, then that's something that you will eventually get over. Trust me, I've done that. And uh, so once you do that, you will have to buy a USAW card for one year. Now, uh, the rates on those are typically about $65 for a year. And uh, although the upfront costs uh, will be, ex you know, expensive, right? That's something that anytime you do a sanctioned event, they will keep track of your progress in terms of max out, attempts, body weight, everything, location and everything. So... That's a little bit of a uh, bit of a start and how to start in Olympic weightlifting. 
So I just want to say, guys, thanks for watching so much. Uh, I got sick with the flu, so there was a little break in some of the videos and training. Uh, but everything will be back on a weekly basis. So like the video if this helped. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I said in the video. Until next time, guys. Can't wait to see you again. I'll be posting next week. See ya.